Welcome to the Center for Online Learning and Teaching Technology Micro Lecture on Rubrics. Are your students capable of better quality work than their current submissions? Are you searching for a way to effectively communicate your academic standards with your coaches? Let's explore some tips for developing specific and descriptive evaluation criteria that will maximize the impact of your rubrics. When we review the host of literature available on designing effective rubrics, we see that good rubrics are designed so they clearly define each criterion across multiple performance levels. They relate to the students that if they do X, they will earn Y. Better rubrics are designed so that they are opportunities for interaction and reflection. They relate to the students that final submissions undergo revision cycles. The best rubrics are designed so they guide students during self-assessment toward the next desired state of performance for each criterion. They relate to the students that unacceptable work is temporary and with the right tools should be corrected before submission. So how do we ensure we are clearly defining each criterion? Let's take a look at these two examples. On the left we have a typical descriptor effectively synthesizes ideas throughout the paper. That may be enough description for you as you assess work, but do your students understand what you mean by effectively? If we take qualifiers and analyze them, we'll have a better understanding of what we're looking for. When I'm reading students' papers and I look for effective synthesis, I'm looking for a unifying theme, for well-selected implicit and explicit points of comparison, for detailed descriptions of the relationships between ideas, and for the formation of a new understanding. If students read this revised description, they should have a much better understanding of the product I consider a work. In the same way, it's incredibly important to define the product you consider F work. Usually, we tend to write negation statements like, does not synthesize ideas. What we should aim for here is twofold. First, we should describe the common, yet unacceptable mistakes that students make. In this case, if they are not synthesizing, what are they doing? Typically, they either identify superficial relationships between ideas, if any, or they summarize the ideas without describing the relationships between them. If I were a student who summarized and I thought I synthesized, this revised descriptor will help me realize that I am about to score very poorly unless I begin describing the relationship between the ideas I wrote about. Second, we should provide some kind of remediation for those students who find themselves in this unacceptable column. This helps in a number of ways. It allows you to proactively mentor your struggling students. It embodies your genuine interest and investment in their success. It empowers them to use available resources to strengthen their area of need. It emphasizes the idea that F performance should only be temporary. It fosters continued improvement, and it ultimately means that submitted work will be of higher quality. Once you have your A and F products defined, you can begin describing what average performance would look like. Here are a few design tips that may help. We want to avoid central tendency by planning for an even number of performance levels. We also want to organize these so that the most proficient level is closest to the criteria. We want to be cognizant of the scale we are using. Some criteria are best assessed using a Likert type scale, emphasizing numerical definitions for each descriptor. Some criteria are best assessed using a conceptual continuum, like the one we see here. The F level might be considered fact-based. The C level is more aligned with understanding, the B level is application or analysis, and the A level would be synthesis. Two of rubric's biggest enemies are overlaps and gaps. When we use specific definers that need to be present at each particular level, we minimize overlaps. When we use key phrases such as at least, may, most, if present, and or, etc., we minimize those gaps. For example, if we look at this content criterion, if student A uses at least three weekly articles and at least one self-selected external source, but all citations are direct, what would that student score? If you answer developing, you are correct. 
What if you were a student who worked diligently but just didn't understand and you scored an F? We typically call this column unacceptable, inadequate, incompetent, poor, and the like. These all imply a permanent stamp of disapproval. What if we added yet to these? Your work is not yet acceptable. It is not yet adequate. This emphasizes the transient nature of the performance level and our desire for their improvement. It creates a psychological shift in perspective that plants the seed that you expect better work from them next time and that it is an ever-evolving process. And sometimes a little shift in our own perspective doesn't hurt. Don't be afraid to consider field-specific labels for your performance levels. What student would want his work to be considered that of a first-year student when he really wants to be a mentor? Or task-specific labels. What if you were reviewing Star Wars in your film studies class? Wouldn't you want your work to be right up there with Yoda? What if you were studying children's literature, specifically Harry Potter? Who would want to be Ron when you could be Hermione? Or creative levels. Who would want their instructor to look at their work and think, ay, 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 ay instead of, que padre? So, let's take a look at our rubrics a little more closely. Let's make them outstanding. Let's make them sophisticated. Let's make them bien padre. You have at your disposal the rubrics workshop that outlines the exercises for transforming your descriptions. You also have the Blackboard rubrics tool handout for more information on adding rubrics to your course. If you have specific questions, please ask your instructional designer. We are more than happy to help. Thank you for joining us for Colt's micro lecture on rubrics.